All right, y'all, so next, this drone entered Mel's hole. Sounds strange. What was captured terrifies the world. Let's check it out. Go for it. Another mystery buried deep in the hills of eastern Washington keeps resurfacing. A bottomless pit said to be a pathway to the paranormal. In the heart of eastern Washington lies a strange mystery. Mel's Hole, a seemingly oh. bottomless pit wrapped in mystery. Discovered by local resident Mel Waters, this hole has led to a series of eerie discoveries and unexplainable events that defy rational understanding. Mm -hmm. Surveillance cameras lowered into its depths have captured unsettling images, leaving even seasoned scientists perplexed. Surrounded by whispers of paranormal activity and government secrecy, the truth behind this unfathomable void remains elusive. Join us as we delve into the mind-blowing story of Mel's Hole and uncover the secrets hidden within its dark depths. The Endless Well in the Hills. In a remote corner of eastern Washington, a mysterious enigma continues to baffle and intrigue locals and visitors alike. Nestled among the rolling hills, a strange, seemingly endless pit has captured the imagination of many. Known as Mel's Hole, this curious phenomenon has been the subject of many tales and explorations. Denise Whitaker from KFOR embarked on a journey eastward to uncover the truth behind this enigmatic pit. When a camera was lowered into this abyss, the footage it returned astounded people across the globe. This unusual pit is located on what is known as the Malat property, situated to the west of a place called Ellensburg, specifically on the Manistash Ridge. It looks like a regular hole in the ground, similar to a well, but it's not for drawing water. Over the years, it became a makeshift dumping site where various items were discarded. From household trash to broken machinery and worn out car tires, many things were thrown into this hole. Surprisingly, no matter how much was dumped, the hole seemed to never fill up, which made Mel, the property's owner, very curious about its depth and contents. Strange happenings began to unfold around this mysterious pit. I still can't get past us dumping things in there. Like, like we, when it comes to ruin, ruining the planet, man ranks at the top. We don't know how much destruction we could have been doing, adding to pouring fuel on the fire. Like, what would make you think just to start dumping things down there? What sense did that make? I, I don't know, man. I, that's, it makes no sense for us to do that, bro. What was, who, whose bright idea was that? Mel noticed that his dogs would steer clear of it, acting as if they were wary or frightened. He also detected odd, unexplainable signals on his radio when near the hole and it seemed to have no bottom at all. Stories and theories about Mel's Hole began to spread far and wide. In 2017, a brave team of researchers located the hole and decided to investigate further by lowering a camera into its depths. What they saw was beyond belief and so alarming that they were compelled to escape, realizing the potential danger they were in. Join us as we delve into the story of Mel's Hole uncovering the chilling mysteries and the bold efforts of those who sought to uncover its secrets. The pit, known as Mel's Hole, is not just any ordinary hole. It is a large circular gap, about nine feet across, encircled by a wall made of stones. This wall extends down about 15 feet before giving way to complete darkness. The hole has been a community dumping site for years, not only by Mel Waters and his wife, but by neighbors as well, even before Mel moved to the area. What is peculiar is that there's no sound when things are tossed into the hole, no echoes or any sign that they've reached the bottom, which bewilders everyone. Driven by curiosity and a knack for problem solving, Mel Waters, an avid fisherman, decided to take matters into his own hands. He wanted to discover how deep this mysterious hole actually was. Using his fishing gear, he attached a one pound weight to a fishing line and began lowering it into the pit to his astonishment, even after unspooling 4,500 feet of line, the weight had not reached the bottom, leaving the true depth of the hole a bewildering mystery still unsolved. Without giving up, Mel pulled the fishing line back up. This time, he attached a pack of Lifesavers candy to it instead of the heavy weight, hoping he might find water way down in the hole. He let the Lifesavers drop deep down, but when he pulled them back up, they were still completely dry, not a drop of water on them. Undaunted, Mel kept trying. He attached more and more fishing line together, sending it down into the abyss until he had used almost 10,000 feet of line. That's nearly two miles straight down, but still there was no bottom in sight. 
even after using a total of 8,80,000 feet of line, that's more than 166 miles, he found nothing. The hole just seemed to go on forever, keeping its secrets hidden away. Mel noticed something else strange during his experiments. His dogs wanted nothing to do with the hole. They would pull back, digging their paws into the ground, refusing to go anywhere near it. It was as if they knew something was wrong, feeling Definitely. some kind of invisible danger. And it wasn't just the dogs acting weird. The area around the hole was eerily silent, with no birds or insects, although birds would fly over it as if the hole didn't bother them from the air. Yeah, that's a huge sign. No type of wildlife. Dogs don't even want to go near it or come close to it. No, no, no. That's a huge sign. Now, I thought I came across this before, but this is going a little bit more in depth about it. But I thought they had talked about, you know what I mean? Could there be a uh, a hidden civilization down there that we don't know about? Stuff like that. Anytime we've talked about holes that look like this, potential sinkholes or something like this, it's always been linked to uh, a civilization being down there, undiscovered. But to hear this and hear the wildlife won't even go to it? Nah, this is something else. When Mel talked to his neighbors about this, they all said their dogs acted the same way. And then one neighbor told him a shocking story. This man had recently lost his beloved dog, and in his grief, he had thrown the dog's body into the hole. But a few days later, he saw the same dog wearing its familiar collar, alive, and oh, no. running through the woods. He called out to the dog, but it acted as if it didn't know him, as if it had- That's Pet cemetery. That's Pet cemetery right there. No, no, no. Come from someplace else, maybe even another world. Could that really be true? It sounded like something out of a science fiction story. With all these strange happenings and the endless- And even in Pet cemetery, it was on like, what, an Indi Indian burial ground? So, could this be something like that? Depth of the hole. Mel felt overwhelmed and unsure of what to do next. It was 1997, and there was one place where people talked about unusual, unexplained things. The radio show Coast to Coast AMEM with host Art Bell. Art's show was famous for exploring the mysterious and the paranormal, broadcasted from the desert and listened to by millions of people all over the world. Mel decided to reach out to Art Bell and his listeners. Maybe they could help make sense of the bottomless hole and the strange things happening around it. If there was any chance to find answers, it would be through the curious and open-minded audience of Coast to Coast AM. The Mel's Hole Saga darkens with government involvement and deeper mysteries on a popular radio show. Chapter two, Mel and the Military Secret, the hole that changed everything. The radio show that unearthed a mystery, the forbidden land and the hidden truth government secrets and the endless pit. On the 21st of February in the year 1997, something big happened for Mel. He decided to share his story with Art Bell, a well-known radio host who loved talking about mysteries. Mel sent a message to Art, and not long after, they had a phone chat. That conversation was the start of something huge. Suddenly, everyone everywhere was talking about Mel's mysterious hole. Over a few radio programs, Mel shared more and more about his deep, strange hole. People from all corners of the globe listened and gave Mel tips. They suggested he use special light beams called lasers to see how deep the hole went, or try radar, which can see through the ground. Mm. But sharing his story had a big radar. downside. Now the whole world knew about the hole, all because Mel had talked about it on the radio. He gave away little clues about where the hole was. The very next day when Mel tried to go back to his land, he found he couldn't get in. The United States military had found out about the hole and had taken over. They didn't want anyone else near it. Right after Mel had talked on the radio show on Friday night, he noticed helicopters buzzing over his land and they didn't stop the next day. Mel had also mentioned that the hole seemed to change the world around it. Animals didn't like it and stayed away, but plants seemed to do really well near it. Radios didn't work right by the hole either. If you brought a radio close, it would start making weird noises, and sometimes it would pick up stations from far away or even from the past. Once, Mel's radio started playing old-time tunes like from decades ago. He tried to change the station, but instead he found himself listening to a baseball game from 1967, 30 years before. When Art first talked to Mel on his show, they spoke for about an hour. Mel was in a place called Ellensburg when he made that call. But when he tried to get back to his land afterward, he was stopped. 
The military had blocked the way. They had big vehicles and were armed. They told Mel a plane had crashed on his land, but there was no sign of a crash, no broken pieces, no fire, nothing. Yet Mel couldn't get past them. They said they had to check out the crash. A clear and blatant lie. A clear lie. Like, come on. And I know Mel didn't believe. Like, come on, man. I live here. I know what y'all are talking about. I know the hole that we're, you're speaking of. Ain't no plane land there. I, I live here. Like, man, come on, bro. You, just, you see the blatant lie. Crash site first. When Mel asked to speak to their boss, a man dressed in regular clothes came out. This man hinted that Mel might not own his land anymore and even threatened him by saying they might find illegal stuff there, like a secret drug-making place if he made trouble. What? Mel, feeling brave, said he'd tell the news people. But the man just laughed. He said, go ahead and talk. No one would believe your story anyway. But believe it or not, Art Bell and his listeners were ready to believe anything. A couple of days later, Art called Mel back to see what was new. Mel had a wild story to share, even though he hadn't seen it himself. One of his neighbors had seen something really strange, a dark beam of light shooting up from the hole, cutting right through the clouds. It was a kind of darkness that was totally new and scary. Now, Mel hadn't actually seen this dark beam himself, but Art Bell and many of the people who called into his show said that this area of Washington was famous for all sorts of weird stuff. People had seen UFOs, people and things had disappeared, and other odd events had happened there. The people who called into the show had all sorts of ideas about the hole. Some thought it was located on what's called a ley line, which some people believe is like an invisible energy line across the earth. They thought maybe the hole was a gateway to another place or even another time. They imagined that all the stuff thrown into the hole, like trash, broken things, and sadly animals, might end up piled up somewhere else in a different world. One caller even suggested that the hole might be an entrance to the hollow earth. That's an old idea that inside our planet, there's a whole other world, kind of like a giant cave. People kept coming up with more and more theories. Since Art Bell couldn't go back to his own land, he asked people nearby what they knew. An old neighbor said that a long time ago, there used to be big stone pillars around the hole. Listeners warned Mel that talking on the radio might not be so smart because the government could be sure. listening. At the end of the show, Mel said he'd come back to share more news. But when it was time for him to appear again, he was nowhere to be found. He didn't answer his phone or anything. Then, a TV crew decided to go to Ellensburg to check things out for themselves. But when they got there, they couldn't find any hole. What they did find, though, were a bunch of military plans and information that made it pretty clear that the military had been there, or maybe they still were. It would be three whole years before Mel would say that someone offered him a huge amount of money, like $3 million every year, just to let them use his land. But there was a big condition. He had to agree not to talk about it, pack his bags, leave the United States right away and promise never to come back. Mel decided to accept the deal and he moved to Australia for two years. <laughs> I mean, three million dollars plus. I, I mean, I can't be mad at him for that one there. <laughs> Some people might be mad and be like, oh, he shouldn't have took the money, this, that, and the third. You don't know what type of position people are in. You don't know what their circumstances are. No, I feel him for taking the money. But even so, he started to miss his family and everything back home. So, despite everything, Mel made up his mind to sneak back into the United States and visit his family. Mel's journey becomes riskier as he confronts danger and seeks the elusive truth of the hole, the dark truth behind Mel's hole. Mel knew he wasn't supposed to come back. Everyone had warned him, but Mel didn't listen. He came back to visit his family and even planned to tell more of his story on Art Bell's radio show. But things didn't go as planned, not at all. On the day he was supposed to go on the radio, Mel was on a bus. He was on his way to see his nephew. Out of nowhere, an argument starts on the bus. It gets so bad that the police come. Everyone on the bus has to answer questions. Then they're all moved to another bus to continue their journeys. Uh -uh. But Mel's day was about to get weirder. Suddenly, he just blacked out. He has no idea what happened for a while. When he wakes up, he's in a totally different place. He finds himself in an alley in San Francisco, confused and scared. 12 whole days had disappeared from his life. His wallet, what? gone, his arm, hurting a lot. He looks at it and sees marks like someone put a needle in his arm many times oh. in places where tape had been stuck on him, probably for in 4-2. But wait, there's more. Mel tastes blood in his mouth. He checks and finds out some of his back teeth are missing. How did that even happen? Mel is totally lost and doesn't understand what's going on. 
Things don't get any better for Mel. He never makes it back to his own land. Next thing he knows, he's in trouble with the law. They say he built things he shouldn't have, like houses and roads and other stuff. But Mel knows he didn't do any of that. Remember, the government had been using his land for two whole years, but that doesn't matter. Mel ends up losing everything he owns, as if all that wasn't bad enough. Just a day or two after he tries to talk to Art Bell again, Mel checks his bank and finds out all his money is gone. Now, a lot of people start saying Mel's story is just made up. They don't believe any of it. But Art Bell, who loves a good mystery, invites Mel back to tell his story anyway. Mel should have never came back, bro. You accepted the money. Stay where you are. Don't come. You accepted the money. Now look at you. I'll share something interesting. He says a TV crew went to look for his mysterious hole. They didn't find the hole, but they did find evidence that the military had been doing something big in the area. And there's another strange piece of the puzzle. Suddenly, airplanes aren't allowed to fly over Mel's land anymore. The area that's off limits for planes gets even bigger. And then there's something weird on the internet, on a website that shows satellite pictures of the earth. The area around Mel's land is just a black square. You can't see anything. Some people think Mel saw this black square online and made up the story about his land. But here's the thing. The website with the black square didn't start until six months after Mel first called Art Bell. He couldn't have known about it. But just when you think Mel's story can't get any stranger, something new happens. A Native American tribe from Nevada reaches out to him. They've heard about his hole, and they have their own bottomless hole they're studying. They want Mel's help. They think he might understand what's happening because of his own experiences. So now, Mel has a new chapter in his life, heading to Nevada to explore another mystery. They took Mel to see another mysterious hole, but this time it was in a different place. Before they even got there, Mel had some talks with Native American people and a group called the Bosque. They wanted to make sure Mel wasn't secretly working for someone else, like the news or the government. When Mel is just a little too trustworthy, I'm starting to learn. Now, who's to say they weren't with the government saying they were someone else and wasn't going to take you out to that hole and leave you in that hole? Like, you a little too trustworthy, Mel. Once everything was cleared up, Mel got to see the new hole for himself. Everyone was wondering the same thing. What's at the bottom of this hole? This second hole wasn't on Native American land. It was in a public area where the Bosque people, who originally come from the area between France and Spain, have been living. They came to Nevada way back in the 1800s to herd sheep. The Bosque folks said that this hole has been there for a really long time, at least 200 years, and they think of it as a sacred place. It's about the same size as Mel's hole, around nine feet across. But this hole looked different. Instead of a stone wall around the edge, this one had a metal ring all the way down. And it wasn't just any metal. It was something unusual. Mel noticed something really strange about this hole. It felt warm. When he accidentally dropped a tool onto the metal ring, there was no sound. It was like the noise just disappeared. Mel and the Bosque people decided to try some experiments. First, they lowered a bucket filled with ice down into the hole, going down about 1,000 feet. They also kept some ice up top to see what would happen to it. When the ice on top melted, they pulled the bucket back up. But the ice down below, it hadn't melted at all. Even weirder, it wasn't cold anymore, and it was totally dry, like chunks of salt. They tried to melt this strange ice with fire, but instead of melting, it actually caught on fire and kept burning for a really long time, like months. They tried what? sending different amounts of ice down the hole a few times. Sometimes it melted like normal but other times it changed into the weird burnable kind. Then someone from the Bosque group thought about going down the hole themselves, but everyone else quickly said that was a bad idea. So they came up with another plan. They would lower a sheep down into the hole instead. Now this might sound strange, but they really did it. The sheep though seemed to know something wasn't right. It didn't want to go down into the hole at all. It was as if the sheep could sense that something weird was going to happen. Venture deeper into the enigma of Mel's hole, blending the extraordinary with the unexplained. The dark creature from below Nevada. The team carefully lowered a box with a sheep inside it deep into the hole, aiming for 1,000 feet down. Suddenly the rope stopped moving and everything around them felt strange. There was this weird sound, kind of like humming, that filled the air. They decided to leave the sheep down in the hole for about half an hour. When they pulled the box back up, everything looked just the same at first. But when they checked the sheep more closely, they found it wasn't moving. It seemed to be dead. Everyone was shocked and a bit scared. 
They felt like they were dealing with something really big, almost holy. The Bosque people, who know a lot about sheep, decided to open up the sheep to see what had happened inside. What they found was really scary and weird. The inside of the sheep was like it had been cooked, and there was this huge lump, a tumor that took up most of the space inside it. And then things got even weirder. The tumor started moving all on its own. Everyone was so surprised and didn't know what to think. They decided- Maybe the gas is down there, whatever it breathed in did that to it. Maybe, that's what I was thinking about. Maybe they should send like a gas monitor down there, lower a gas monitor down there, see what type of, of gases they, they pick up and different things. What's the, the oxygen level and saturation down there? What, like, I'm starting to think that. Because I was expecting the sheep to come back up mangled or something wrong or happened to it. Maybe it's missing a few limbs. To cut the tumor open to see what was inside. And inside there was something that looked like a baby seal, but not exactly. It was connected to the tumor like a baby to its mom with an umbilical cord. What? But the eyes, those were human eyes. This seal-like thing, after they found it, moved to the edge of the table on its own. Mel felt like it wanted to go back to the hole, so he picked it up even though it was really slimy and smelled strange, like the air after a big storm, and put it near the hole. They all just watched each other for a couple of hours. Then suddenly, the seal thing looked at them one last time and jumped back into the hole. Now, before all this happened in Nevada, Mel was very sick. The doctors told him he had a serious type of cancer in his throat and that he didn't have much time left. But after he came back from this incredible adventure, something amazing happened. He wasn't sick anymore. He felt better than he had in a long time. Mm. Mel believed that somehow, meeting that seal-like creature had cured his cancer. This whole experience changed Mel's life completely. He went through something that most people would never even dream of. It was like he had stepped into a whole different world and come back a new person. As the episode of the radio show wrapped up, a serious caution was shared with everyone listening. The road to where Mel's mysterious hole was located was still out there, real and accessible. But there was a stern warning for all. Don't try to go there. The message was clear. Heading towards the hole could result in strange and possibly scary outcomes, like vanishing without a trace into something completely unknown. A few months after this, Mel went back on the Coast to Coast radio show. This time, he had more stories to tell, especially about what happened after those weird experiments with the never-ending burning ice. One of the Bosque folks, trying to stay warm, had brought a chunk of this burning ice into his cabin. But what followed was nothing he could have ever expected. The fire from the ice never went out. It just kept burning for months. And it did something strange to the air in the cabin. It pulled all the moisture out, making everything super dry. The guy living there got really dry skin and was always thirsty. Even trying to boil water was strange because the steam would somehow get sucked right into the fire. Then something totally unexpected happened. The wood stove, heated by this bizarre ice, just fell right through the floor of the cabin, as if the ground itself couldn't hold it up anymore. Instead of fixing it in a normal way, they just patched up the hole in the floor and kept using the weird fire for heat. But then things got even weirder. A few weeks later, the whole cabin just fell apart into dust, as if it had just given up. Dang. When the cabin owner came back a month later with his brother, they saw something really odd. The stove was now sitting five feet below where the ground used to be. It was as if the burning ice had created a new, baby version of Mel's bottomless hole right there under the stove, leaving a smooth and even surface all around. They tried to get the stove out but couldn't do it on their own. It wasn't until they brought in a huge crane that they were able to pull the stove out of this new mysterious pit. But that's not where the story ends. The Bosque people started sharing their own experiences with the magical seal creature that had come from the original hole. They saw this seal as a kind of friendly spirit, a good presence that had somehow connected them to the strange and powerful energies of the whole. They felt a deep spiritual bond with it, something that went beyond normal understanding. And then there were the birds. Brightly colored birds started appearing around the hole, and no matter what, they couldn't be scared off or hurt. They just kept flying around, unbothered by anything. The Bosque saw these birds as a sign a kind of acknowledgement or blessing from the magical seal mm -hmm. and the mysterious energy of the whole. It was like the birds and the seal were part of a bigger spiritual story that was unfolding right there in Nevada. Moving on, the truth about Mel's hole remains elusive, shrouded in mystery and darkness. The icy revelation 
that refused silence. In a twist that could only be found in the most bizarre of tales, the Bosque group came forward with a mind-bending claim. The magic seal, they said, had found a way to communicate with them. It wasn't through any normal means, but through a series of beeps and clicks over the radio. According to the Bosque, these weren't just random noises. They were messages. The seal, they believed, was actually talking to them, warning them about the dangers of the special burning ice. It was telling them that this ice could cause terrible things to happen if it got into the wrong hands. Art Bell, always looking for proof to back up incredible claims, asked the Bosk if they had any evidence of these strange communications. The Bosk assured him they did. They had recordings of every beep, every click, every message they thought they'd heard from the seal. Art, intrigued, promised to get Mel back on the show to talk about it all. He wanted Mel to bring any evidence he could find, recordings, photos, videos, anything, back from Nevada. The episode ended with promises of more to come, but then something unexpected happened. Mel went quiet. He stopped responding to Art's messages, and then, all of a sudden, his phone line went dead. No one heard from him again. Five years ticked by, and the story of Mel's hole became one of those lingering mysteries, full of what-ifs and maybes, never quite forgotten. Mel's hole, in the end, remains one of the most intriguing stories ever told on Art Bell's show. But what can we actually verify? When it comes to the hole's exact location, things get murky. While satellite images from TerraServer once showed a blacked out area where the hole was said to be, Google Earth later made the area visible again, but nothing conclusive was found. Even if the military had taken over, as Mel claimed, they might have hidden any trace of the hole. Dedicated fans and curious onlookers have tried to pin down the real location based on Mel's descriptions. One person even visited a site that matched Mel's description of his property, complete with two old buildings, one of which had collapsed, just as Mel had said. They found a hole that matched Mel's description, nine feet wide, with a stone wall around it. For a moment, the online world buzzed with excitement. Could this be Mel's hole? But that excitement was short-lived. The hole turned out to be just an old well with a clear bottom in sight. As for Mel himself, he remains as much of a mystery as the hole. There are no records of anyone with his name living in the area where he said he lived. Some think he might have been using a fake name to protect his privacy. But one of the biggest holes in the story, so to speak, is the lack of any photos or physical evidence. Despite all the- I wouldn't pa put it past the government to build a facility over top of it. You know what I mean? That's what I think they will possibly do. That way, when you're out there looking for it, you don't see it. It's inside of a facility now. That, see, that's the way my mind thinks. Like, I think it exists. You're going to have to prove to me otherwise that it doesn't. I believe you, Mel. Incredible tales. No one has been able to produce a single picture of the hole or any of the strange events said to have happened around it. Every time Mel chatted with Art Bell on the radio, Art would ask him for photos to prove his wild stories. But Mel always had an excuse. Sometimes he'd say he just forgot to snap pictures, which sounded pretty weird. Other times he claimed that cameras just wouldn't work near the mysterious hole because of some strange interference. And then there were moments when Mel said he did have photos and even recordings, but for some reason, he never seemed to have them on hand. He'd always say he'd send them over later. Despite all these incredible stories, Mel never tried to make money off his tail. If he'd wanted to, he could have sold all sorts of stuff. T-shirts, books, even fake photos. There were plenty of people who would have... See, and that's what makes it believable as well. He wasn't... There was no monetary gain attached to it for him. He didn't try to exploit it. So, why would he just do this then? No fame, no money he wasn't in, in search of. Uh, I, I like I said, I believe him. Maybe he wasn't just tech savvy with a uh, uh, camera, and like I said, maybe he never remembered, or maybe he didn't want. He only had the originals and had, didn't know how to make copies, and didn't want to give up his originals. Maybe that was the case. I don't know. Would have bought them just because they were fascinated by the story. Some folks think Mel's story got so wild over time that he just couldn't keep up with his own fabrications, leading him to drop off the map. But on the other hand, Mel was pretty good at sticking to his original story. For five years, he never wavered, even when Art Bell tried really hard to catch him in a lie. But let's talk about the hole itself. 
The idea of a hole that goes on for miles and miles without collapsing is pretty hard to believe. It's a geological puzzle. Unless, of course, this hole was some magical gateway to another world or something. But we still don't know for sure. There are people who believe in Mel's hole, but even Art Bell, who loved a good mystery, might have had his doubts. Nevertheless, Art knew his audience loved this kind of eerie, unexplainable tale. It's become a legend that's lasted decades. In 2017, a group of adventurous souls, still hooked on the mystery of Mel's Hole, decided to take matters into their own hands. They gathered up modern tech like GoPro cameras and powerful lights, and they set off to find this legendary pit. Their journey was sparked by some coordinates they found online, pointing them to what could be Mel's Hole. They ended up at a farm, staring into what seemed like an endless void. The depth was beyond understanding. They tossed rocks down it, listening for any sign of a bottom, but the mystery only deepened. While they were there, they noticed someone, or something, watching them from afar. It added an huh. eerie layer to their quest. They had filmed everything, but before they could review the footage, they felt an urgent need to get out of there. Before leaving, they saw a beetle fall into the hole, a moment that symbolized the deep, unending unknown that continues to draw us in, compelling the human imagination to wonder what secrets lie just out of reach. Is Mel's Hole just an urban legend, or is there a deeper, darker truth buried in the Washington wilderness?